Hello everyone, this is your instruction video for the at-home lab that you're going to be doing today. The goal is for you to be able to see that you can get data from all over the place. It doesn't have to be something super scientific, and it doesn't have to be something super mathy, but you just have to pay attention to the numbers that are happening around you. These are some of the quick and easy experiments that I thought of in the past few days, and they're both cheap and they're easy to do. The first one, all you need um, in order to complete it is a watch or something to time. You're going to need to see the seconds for 10 seconds at a time, and what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to do some sort of exercise. What I have here is that you will lay down on the floor and then get back up, and you'll do that twice, and then you'll measure your heart rate. I also included a diagram to see that you can measure your pulse, your heart rate from your neck or from your wrist and I explained how you get it from those two places. What you're gonna do is you're going to look at your watch and then count the number of heartbeats that happen in 10 seconds. Um, just to do a quick example, let me do two repetitions of laying on the floor and getting back up. And then very soon after, you look at your watch, find a starting point, Okay, so I felt 14 beats in 10 seconds. We're going to scale that up using step number five. We're gonna multiply the number of beats by six to get the heart rate in beats per minute because that's normally how you interpret somebody's heart rate is how fast it's beating, how many times it's beating in one whole minute. The number I counted to was 14. And so I'm gonna do 14 times six, that would be 84 beats. So after going down and up twice, my heart rate is now 84 beats per minute, or at least it was. It probably lowered back again. Now that I've had a little bit of a break. And then you would do it again, but you would go down um, five times, and then you would do it one last time where you go down 10 times. And you record your heart rate each time after you finish that number of repetitions. If you choose not to lay down, you may do a squat, or you can do a squat jump, or a jumping jack, or something like that. The instructions are all right there. Your second lab choice has to do with multiple participants, or you can just look around your house, but you're going to need to count a clothing type. You can count t-shirts, you can count dress shirts, you can count shorts, you can count pairs of shoes but you want to have multiple people because you're gonna need at least three people's ages and you're going to need um, the number of clothing type that person has. And everybody needs to be the same thing. So everybody's either counting their shoes or everybody's counting their t-shirts or everybody's counting um, something else that they have that everybody has in common. So you're gonna record people's ages and the number of that item that they have. Yeah, you should probably have them count their own clothes, and then they can tell you their total number. You're going to record that total number and their age, and that's what you're going to be using for your statistics. You would probably want somebody young, somebody in the middle, like around their 20s, maybe somebody um, under your age, and then somebody who's a full adult with whatever age that is and their number of clothes. The final lab has to do with um, measuring how high something is bouncing. So you're gonna need a measuring tape for this one. And I have one set up over here and I'll just give you a quick example of what we would do. So with your measuring tape against a wall, you're going to need to see one foot high, two feet high, and four feet high. My ruler only goes to three feet, so I would need to find a way to mark these measurements on the wall. Maybe I could use my tape to give a mark and then I could just write the numbers on the tape that tape that I have on the ground right there. I can tape it to the wall and then use it to mark. But right now I'm using that as my drop because I don't have a ball in my classroom, but you should be able to find a ball at your house. So you're gonna take it, you're gonna put it at one foot, you're going to drop, and you're going to want to record how high that object bounced back up. And you're gonna compare it, you're gonna see how far 
if you drop it from drop the item from two feet high, how high did it bounce that time? As you can tell from that short experiment, you really do want some sort of ball and not um, not a roll of tape. If you don't have a ball and you don't have something that you can bounce and measure, or you don't have a ruler, then go do one of the other two labs. What you're going to do with all of that data is you're going to fill it into the table. You're going to need to label your trials. You're going to have um, either you're going to have three trials or you're going to have three participants, and you're going to have the numbers for those people's responses or whatever data you got. You need to label what the data is for, and you need to put the numbers into the table. I also need you to add the information into your own scatter plot. So you're going to need to label your x-axis, label your y-axis with what the variable is actually measuring. It could be age, and it could be clothes, it could be height, and it could be bounce height, it could be um, repetitions and heart rate, and you're going to make a scatter plot and draw the linear regression. Draw the linear regression, calculate the correlation coefficient, calculate the equation using Desmos. Finally, you're going to answer a few questions. You're going to interpret your correlation coefficient and make a concluding statement about um, the relationship between those items. And you're also going to say how you can improve this lab, what you could have done better, what you learned from your mistakes. Like I learned, I don't want to use roll of tape for measuring bounce height. And what new questions you have. It's always true that once you find the answer for something, you're going to have a new idea for um, something new that you could find out. Or I want you to tell me what you are wondering about after performing your trials. Good luck.